All right, now, if Tim Hudak and the PCs want to win government, they are almost certainly going to have to steal some seats currently held by Liberals. And in the Ottawa area, that means a seat like Orleans, that's a suburb on Ottawa's eastern wing, but also a seat like Ottawa West Nepean, currently held by Liberal Bob Chiarelli, the energy minister. Challenging Chiarelli for the second time in as many elections, progressive conservative candidate Randall Denley. Good to see you. Yeah, pleasure. So, this, the last time we were just chatting before you came on, it was a thousand vote difference, and yep. as you've mentioned, 45,000 cast, so that was yep. pretty close. Yep. How do you narrow the gap and get over the top this time? Uh, I say a combination of hard work and good policies. Uh, people are really liking what we're talking about. You know, the big thing uh, that I hear most about at the door is the high energy prices. You right. Know, I have the good luck, of course, that uh, Mr. Shirelli is the energy minister. Now, he's not necessarily responsible for those, but he's got to wear because well, he's got the portfolio now. Well, absolutely. And I'll tell you, he's responsible for part two, which is a 42% increase in the next five years. And people are already feeling a, a very strong burden from these prices. The idea of them going up 42% more, it just seems crazy to people. And it's absolutely unnecessary. You know, the, the thing I see in my writing is we have a huge number of seniors. And they're just, they're afraid, they're worried about being able to afford to stay in their own homes. They look at what these power prices have already done to them, what mm -hmm. they're going to do next. And a lot of them heat with electricity, so they're, you know, they're getting hit twice on this stuff. And the other thing they're worried about is their health. Right. I, mean, I think we've got a great policy to expand home care. You know, our principle is pretty clear on this. We want people to stay in their own home as long as they can. And every time I mention that at the door to a senior, they all nod their heads. Everybody wants this. I wonder if you can compare this campaign to the last one. We're just talking with Adrian about how certainly the Liberal and the Democrats, it's a very different campaign that yeah. they're running, and it's a different campaign that your leader is running as well. But give me your sense how, how it feels. Yeah, you know, I would say the, uh, the push for change is much stronger this time. You know, our party's assessment last time, it, it was a change election, we mm -hmm. thought. And I think it could have been, but we didn't do quite enough to sell ourselves or really distinguish ourselves from the Liberals. You know, certainly with the kind of things we brought out this time, we're doing that, but I'm really hearing at the door that people are fed up, they've had enough. Well, you know? well and this budget is not, it's not a McGinty budget. This was, no. a, well, in fact, let's, do we have that clip? Kathleen Wynne today was pretty much saying that this is an ND, NDP budget. Uh, let's take a listen to Kathleen Wynne responding to charges that uh, she's campaigning over there on the left with, uh, with uh, Andrea Horvath. What I'm hearing from our candidates is that there are a lot of questions about why the NDP didn't support our budget. You know, there is a lot in our budget that, uh, that, as I have said, would have recommended itself to people who think progressively about this province. I would say to, uh, I would say to those NDP voters to take a very close look at the, uh, the plan that we're putting forward. In and I think that was the clearest indication yeah. yet that Wynne is essentially admitting, yes, she tabled an yeah. NDP budget. So that, I assume, yeah. has got to make it easier for a party that's saying, great, we're in the center, uh, center, center right. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why I'm hearing so many liberals at the door, the, the sort of remnant fiscally responsible liberals. Right. It sounds funny when you say it, but there are definitely people who have been liberal supporters who do understand that we just can't keep borrowing a billion dollars a month to get by. In your estimation, what did it make a difference that the Premier was from an Ottawa area riding last time out? In other words, he might get that hometown sort of effect where they just want to see the Premier coming from their hometown. Well, was well that, there was, was that some of that, yeah. I mean, d despite everything, really, and against all reason, uh, Dalton McGinty still has had, I think yeah. would be a better word, a uh, local popularity. Sure. People respected him. He'd been elected a few times. He's you know, done a lot of things. He spent a lot of money in Ottawa. And... He sold a great story last time. Everything was fine in Ontario. Right. Yeah, we're happy times are around the corner, folks. Nothing to worry about. Well, of course, you know, we know that wasn't true. And it led to two and a half years of just digging deeper and deeper into the hole. And this is what people are worried about. You know, they know that we're going in the wrong direction. They know we're going there fast. And when they see a party finally stand up and be honest with people and say, look, we're going to do it differently. We're going to lay out our plan. We're going to turn this thing around so seniors don't have to worry about heating their house. You know, I was talking to a guy the other day, he said, you know, it, was, it was almost dusk when I was at his house, mm -hmm. I thought there was nobody home. You know, he comes to the door, he's got one little light on, he said, well, I don't like to turn my lights on, it's too expensive. He Is said, that so? Yeah, I don't even like to use my stove, the guy says, because it's too expensive. Wow. I mean, this is people in their 80s, you know, they're maybe making $18,000 a year in pensions. And my opponent says, yeah, well, unfortunately for them, we're going to increase their power bill by $650. And he just shrugs, off, shrugs it off and, yeah. sort of, and laughs about it. It's a cup of coffee or something yeah, like that. Yeah, absolutely. There's, John Wright, the pollster at Ipsos Reid, when he released his last one, yeah. uh, said 72% said change. And he said yeah. that's the highest he's ever seen it. So yeah. that appetite for change is out yeah, there. absolutely. There could be people, though, that say, 
well, what about these new Democrats? They don't sound nearly as, quote, nutty as they used to. They actually yeah. want to cut, but not as much as Tim Hudak does. They want to do some things, but not as much as Tim Hudak does. What do you say to somebody in the doorstep who says, well, I'm actually thinking maybe going with Horvath this time around? Well, as long as they're not going liberal, I'm happy enough with them. But <laughs> in your riding, the split actually would work in your yeah, favor. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. I'm, I'm hoping my NDP friend will take some votes right. from the liberal. But, you know, really when people look at the two parties, they just don't see any difference. I mean, you know, Kathleen Wynne's right. It's an NDP budget. So here we've got two NDP r parties running right now. When people say, yeah, I think I'm going to vote for a change, I know they're going to vote for me and my party because the NDP has not change. Well, and as you, you mentioned, you're riding, you're quite right. If they don't vote for the liberal, it's all good for you. Yeah, That's I often point out you're not going to get the Liberals out by voting NDP in my riding. That's there we are. Sure. Randall Denley, good luck. I'll let you get yeah, back to the thanks. door knocking all on right. this holiday. All right, great all to right. see you.